Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at one of those, um, I don't even know how to describe them, uh, cross promotion ships or something. Uh, you know, the, the sort of Warhammer 40k stuff that, uh, or, or anime or something that happens occasionally where you get ships that look a bit different and uh, there was going to be a whole set of them for the Pan-Asian lines. Uh, that was announced in the last patch notes. So I figured that's well, the first one. I'm going to take a look just briefly <laughs> and see what it is that we're getting ourselves into here. So this is the Wijing, I think is how it's pronounced. That is a province in China. But uh, this is, well, how am I going to put this? Uh, I mean, you, you're all already expecting the this ship did not exist <laughs> kind of line here. Uh, this this is um, in in a different universe. The the French have built the Alsace class and ended up selling after World War Two, where the French did not get invaded by the Germans. They ended up selling them to uh, the People's Republic of China, and uh, they have been making some cosmetic modifications <laughs> post war. And been using it until the, uh, let's say, uh, 1970s, when the ship was eventually uh, was, was eventually scrapped because, uh, you know, there just wasn't, there, there was no money and interest and aircraft carriers had reliably replaced battleships. And, you know, um, the, the Chinese didn't have the need to bombard any Middle Eastern countries, so they ended up not keeping you to use them. Uh, that's the best I can come up with why this thing would exist. Because this is literally an Alsace with uh, with very slight modifications. So let's take a look at it. Also, why or oh why are we are we using that garish camo? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> uh, le yeah, let's begin with some let's begin with some uh, some statistics. And I probably have to completely wrong. Yep, they have the. No, that's not that's not what we're looking at today. Um, that's what we're looking at today. So the Wujing has a, has an engine accelerator, but it's only an engine boost two, uh, compared to the Alsace's engine boost three. The difference being that that thing gives sixteen percent for twenty five seconds, and that one gives twelve percent for twenty five seconds. So it's it's an engine boost, but it's not quite as good as the French because you know the engines have worn out over the years, I guess. And instead of getting the rapid reload. Uh, the Wujing gets a fuel smoke, fuel smoke one, so uh, it, ru it runs for about nine seconds, which isn't an awful lot, but it is a fuel smoke. So it's a sort of Italian battleship hybrid thing, <laughs> at least in game, uh, when it comes to when it comes to ship skills. Uh, looking at the statistics, uh, she does get marginally more hit points, not that it matters. The hull otherwise is exactly the same, maneuverability is identical, the guns are slightly different. So, I mean, they are the same guns, but they do have a little bit better range and they have a 20 second base reload instead of the 22 second reload because she does not get the, uh, she does not get the rapid reload, which, you know, is the sort of party piece of the French battleships. It's the sort of sneak around and then go, ha ha, <laughs> and then switch on the rapid reload and blast everybody in the face kind of thing. Uh, you can't do that in this one. The secondaries are identical, the auto secondaries are identical, so is the AA, and so is the concealment. So it's an Alsace. Uh, it's, it's a non-rapid reload Alsace with slightly better range and a fuel smoke. <laughs> which um, got me to uh, which got me to think for a second. And uh, I'm gonna have to switch over, I'll be right back. So the question I've been asking myself is what what kind of difference does a rapid reload make versus a two second base reload improvement? Which one is better? Um, it's time for a little bit of math, so feel free to skip this section if you're not into that sort of thing. But I made a spreadsheet, and uh, how do we con how do we compute that? How do we figure out which one's better? Okay, so assumptions here. Uh, we, we are, we are assuming an effective combat time of 360 seconds, which would be six minutes because the first minute you don't have anything to shoot at. Uh, this is still an idealized 
way, but we're going to we're going to use that because we're only going to use it for comparisons. So we've got 360 uh, seconds of effective combat time. The rapid reload on the Alsace uh, gives us a 30% reload increase and lasts for 20 seconds. So we've got the base reload on the Alsace of 22 seconds and on the Wujing for 20 seconds. Uh, the Alsace gets three rapid reloads and uh, with a rapid reload active, we're literally just uh, just multiplying the base reload by one minus the increase, which gives us a time of 15.4 seconds. Now, for the Wujing, it's relatively easy. We're just uh, assuming an ideal scenario here, where every time you're reloaded, you go you get to fire. And uh, I know that this is idealized, but uh, uh, it's it's a it's a starting point. So we're literally just dividing the 360 seconds by our reload of 20 second base reload, giving us an ideal of 18 salvos that we can fire per battle. In reality, we're not going to be firing 18 salvos because you know you need to you you're looking, you need to wait to uh, to get ships in uh, in into position and range and these sort of things. So we could probably assume 15 maybe in a in a in a somewhat ideal scenario. On the Alsace, it gets a little bit more difficult. So, how do we actually compute that? Well, uh, we're, we're assuming that we are using an idealized rapid reload. We're going to assume that you can use the rapid reload to its best effect, right? So, such that I think it's 10 seconds or so. When you're 10 seconds down on the reload, then you activate the rapid reload, which gets the reload down to 15 seconds, which gets you reloaded pretty much instantaneously after a couple of seconds at least and then you get a full 15 second reload through just before the rapid reload skill uh, expires which means that uh, everything else aside you're going to get uh, two shot salvos off within a scope of 15.4 times 15.4 uh, seconds twice which means we are going to and to start subtracting that from the effective combat time, because this is the, these are the rapid reload windows that we might be using. And uh, then we are literally just dividing the rest by, uh, by the normal reload time. And we come out with a very, very similar uh, number of total salvos. So in an idealized scenario, it's actually pretty similar. In a practical scenario, that's a different story because you end up having a burst damage on the Alsace that you do not have on the Wujing because you can't poke your nose out and then in relatively rapid succession get three salvos off. Or you could get two salvos off in a, in a time of, of 30 seconds, whereas with uh, the Wujing you only get one salvo off and you'd still be on the reload, uh, still ha still be halfway through the reload. So in effect, you get an extra salvo off within a 40 second window, which would be the two salvos that you get from the Wujing, you get an extra salvo off earlier from the Alsace. In completeness, otherwise, in terms of just pure salvos that you get out, it's pretty comparable. So back on back on the normal things. So it's a it's an Alsace that lacks the sort of burst uh, burst firing ability, and in return does get the um, does get fuel smoke, which I would say is actually and this might be counterintuitive not a terrible trade. Um, yes, the rapid reload is great. Yes, being able to get an extra salvo out can make the difference between taking another salvo and not taking another salvo, but so can the fuel smoke. Because what I find is that, at least the way I play French battleships, and this is by all intents and purposes a French battleship, is uh, to use the speed, get into positions where uh, the enemy does not necessarily expect you or where they are otherwise distracted, uh, show up and then blast them in the face. With the fuel smoke, what you can do is once they've spotted you and they go, oh, <laughs> French battleship, I need to shoot at. You can, uh, once you you notice that they're going to be starting to shoot at you, you can activate the fuel smoke and you can throw off their aim. So instead of getting one of your own salvos in earlier, you get the enemy to waste one. And in my book, that's sort of equivalent, but uh, it obviously very much depends on how you like to play these sort of things. Uh, so 
I would say in in regards it, it's not a, it's not a massive loss not to have the rapid reload because you do get the fuel smoke in return and it has its own uses. All right, but enough of, of that theory. Let's uh, have a look on how I've set the shop, uh, this whole thing up. Let's begin with the camel to answer that question. You might notice something. You might notice something missing. What's missing is the choice. Now, you might be aware that I have a... Uh, how do I put this? <laughs> I have somewhat of a disdain for these sort of camels. And uh, that is just purely a personal matter of taste, right? It's it's it's, it's like an anime thing. Right? I, I like anime, but not in a World War II warships game. <laughs> uh, I, I have watched anime that contains, well, anime characteristics and World War II warships, and it was weird. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I don't necessarily want that stuff in the game. Now, other people might like that, and I'm totally happy with them to have a choice. As you know, I'm all about personal responsibility and choice. So I don't mind people having the choice to sail around with a camel that looks like a dolphin. If they are, they find that nice and interesting and they would like to, to their ships to look like that, be my guest. More power to you. But what I don't like is being... Is, is being not given the choice not to have a garish camel on this thing, which is exactly what this is. Because this camel comes built in and you can't remove it. It's there. You cannot not have the camel. In fact, you can't even have no camel at all. You, you, you can't not have the camel. It's there. It's fixed. It's permanent. Which has the upside that you get a free, well, I wouldn't call it historical, but permanent camel. It has the downside that you can't remove the darn thing because you look like something out of Thomas the Train uh, meeting Kung Fu Panda. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, what does it give us? It gives us hit points, range, dispersion, torpedo damage reduction. So by all means and purposes, it's a historical camo. It just looks like garbage. In my personal opinion, everybody's taste can vary. Again, if you like the ship. So in terms of gameplay mechanics, you get free historical camo on it. In came in, in, in terms of uh, aesthetics, you get a removal of choice, and you get that thing forced down your throat. And I'm not gonna start reading the ship description. Don't don't go don't go there. You've been warned. All right. Uh, the setup that I've going I've gone with main battery mod two because you're not having a rapid reload. It's a French ship. It's got terrible dispersion. It doesn't matter because you're gonna get up close and personal anyway. And I may as well further buff the reload because, um, you know, the reload's actually pretty good because you've got lots of guns, which somewhat compensates for the French dispersion, unlike on certain other, sh other ships, <coughs> must say. <coughs> and uh, you you might as well just, you've, you, you don't have the world's greatest armor, but you've got enough armor to get up close and personal and do things against people. And I may as well maximize the amount of Daka that we do with it. Well, that's probably the wrong word, but yeah, everything else is um, is the same thing. Now, I know that there are people out there who really like to play the ships in concealment, and uh, again, it's a matter of choice. I don't because it's a battleship. I'm not going to sneak on on everybody. Yes, you could potentially disengage if you wait the twenty odd seconds for your for your uh, for your for your bloom to go down, and then. Um, this is something you uh, you do in a ship like the Kearsarge. And that's something I, I I sort of agree with. I could imagine a um, a Vermont to play concealment as well. Maybe with that thing with the reload on that thing that might actually work relatively well. This is a ship that I sail around with at max speed, have fun, get up close and personal, blood people in the face. If things go well, if things don't go well, I die. <laughs> but I had fun regardless. So there we go. Uh, steering it is, because steering is what I want, and steering is what we get. Commander skills. You don't get the rapid reload, so you don't have to waste any skills on that, which means we can take the uh, survivalist build here, uh, which gives us repair kit cooldown and uh, um, additional HP recovery. Uh, I do have the exploit weakness here. You could also uh, take generalist. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's one like the other. Uh, obviously, extinguisher, obviously, engine overload. You don't need to get the master reloader, so you can pick uh, compartment maintenance for the occasion when you're up against carriers. Or um, you could take the honor seeker. You definitely do want the APCS eventually and, uh, um, you know, buff the penetration a little bit more on those guns. But yeah, there we go. So we have a Chinese Alsace with terrible camo 
no rapid reload and fuel smokes. Uh, this could have been a black Alsace. Is there a black Alsace? There isn't. I don't have one in the press account, and I had a quick look around, and there might not have been one. But um, either way, this this is almost a black ship. So don't let the different uh, different nation and the the premium marker on it fool you. This is a black Alsace, full intents and purposes, because you get sort of the thing that you do on black ships, which is the same ship with slightly improved stats and. Uh, uh, and a randomizer run over the ship's kills, pretty much. Okay, but enough talking. Let's uh, get into battles. And I've got two battles for you. One battle is the, this is what happens in most games. And one battle is the, this happens when things go my way battle. Anyway, let's get to it. Our first battle is center control in cage. We're up against a Manfred von Richthofen, Monty, Vermont, Seattle, Shima, and Jutland. Off we go. This is... A battle, I would say, that you're probably going to get two out of three. Or one, right? And this is this is sort of the fate of all, um, you know, French battleships. <laughs> Similar to the Germans, you, you're going to have to be able to accept that you're not going uh, in top tier. And in the top tier meta, you're not going to be able to do extremely well in every single battle. Because these ships have a special purpose. In the case of this thing... And yeah, it is a French battleship. Uh, we, the purpose is to uh, get around and uh, get into people, get into positions where you get crossfires and, you know, just make yourself generally useful. This is not necessarily a um, ship of the line, sort of a hold the base kind of thing. Uh, unfortunately, um, you don't always get the choice to play that way because here's a carrier in play and uh, obviously two destroyers and... If the enemy team does not allow us to play like this and we get focused, then things go awry very quickly. Yes, Terry, but you could have made a conceal. It doesn't matter. There's a freaking carrier in place. Anyway, Shima to shoot that. <laughs> uh, get some shots out at Shima with the forward guns. And then we'll... Um, and yeah, the armor piercing actually does full pens. At well, okay, that was just a bot Shima. <laughs> I thought that was one of ours. Uh, fortunately, the one, ours are actually inside the capture circle. Okay, we've got a Montana to shoot at, sitting behind that rock there. So we're getting ourselves into into the into the cap, which is generally a good idea. And then we'll be unloading at that Montana, who thinks that he's he's smart and hidden, which he isn't, because <laughs> I can't see you uh, behind your rock there. Uh, there's a Shima out there, and uh, yes, yes, you can do that to a Monty. Unfortunately, the Monty can do that right back as well. So we do need to kind of watch where we're going here. Uh, I do have the fuel smoke, which, as you know, fuel smokes you can take with you, but um, uh, right now I'm just going to reverse a bit and get out of the fire, out of the line of fire. But we've done a, we've done a nice 20,000 points of damage so far, which isn't terrible for uh, effectively a minute of effective combat time. I've got another shot at the Shima, but I think, yeah, we just got one overpen at this point. Uh, the thing is that I like about this ship is that the guns reload quickly. Even even if you're not using your rapid reload, the guns are re reloading very, very nice and quick. There's a Seattle for us to shoot at, so let's get a couple shots out of that, that, that thing. And that Montana is still trying to kill me. So uh, we, do need, we do need to back off a little bit again. But uh, I'm not sure what our other battleship's doing there. I can't remember what it was, but uh, it's guarding the carrier by the looks of it. Uh, which is not particularly helpful because the carrier is under attack. <laughs> it would be much nicer if it was helping to tank the tank the battle line here, because I'm not starting to come under air attack. So, I'm using the fuel smoke, trying to throw off the dive bo uh, the torpedo bombers, uh, but unfortunately, um, uh, well, it's it's worked against half of them. <laughs> so, uh, I'll take it. Uh, there's something on extremely low health. I think it's the Jutland, but uh, I don't think I'll have shots at it. So, we get another salvo out at the Seattle. And uh, the, the carrier is doing its du is doing his duty pretty well there. Uh, shame that Seattle went un undetected. But uh, we're just camping this position. Ca camping a position at long range is not necessarily what these what these sort of ships are great at. Because you see, I am already running reasonably low on hit points. They are not um, being shot at is not a great thing in this ship. So now I'm coming under HE spam, and um, Smolensk is just sitting back there. Decides that he doesn't want to do anything. Uh, the other battleship uh, is now actually coming forward and I am taking a lot of fire uh, from that Montana. There's also a Vermont. Uh, oh, it's a Republic, yeah. Uh, Republic has actually been tanking a fair bit, but um, he's sort of in a, in a similar position that I am, that we, we don't really have a way to, to move. Enemy so 
we do have to dodge all those torpedoes coming in. There's still one destroyer out there, so... And we're coming under concentrated fire both from that Monty and from that Vermont over there. And, um, uh, yeah, at this range, I would need to be a little closer. And we have just lost uh, our Republic to the enemy Vermont. Uh, Smolensk has decided he no longer wants to play. And uh, we are holding the cap, so we, that, that's kind of the only thing we've got going for ourselves. But uh, there's still a nasty crossfire set up between Vermont and Montana. And then we're going to see if see if I can get some shots out and help kill that Vermont, but I'm still coming under furious fire. Ah, oh, he turned. Uh, furious fire from um, from the, both the Monty and HE spam from the Seattle over there. Uh, the Seattle is the big. What is what is our this? What is that Regolo doing? Okay, so he just decided he wants to commit suicide by Seattle. What compelled you to do that? Honestly, I don't understand. Uh, there's a Utland over there, so I'm gonna have to switch over to high explosive. I'm gonna try and do something on the flank here. Uh, and see if I can at least get the Utland killed before I inevitably go down, because that Monty and Vermont have a very good crossfire setup with the Seattle in support, and there's absolutely no, nothing I can do about it. So, um, we've still got two minutes to go. We do have somewhat of a points lead, but we're now two kills behind, and that Östergötland is going to get killed by the carrier, but he did get some torpedoes off against the Vermont. Uh, and these are fast torps, so that's a dead Östergötland. Uh, Smolensk is back in the game. Oh no, he survived. Nice. Uh, enemy Jutland is down. Well done, Midway. That, that Midway is doing is doing his level best there. Oh, no no flooding on the Vermont. And that Östergötland is on extremely low hit points. And he's dead. So the Seattle has taken him out. That, that Seattle is doing the exact right thing, which is why I was trying to blab him. But, um, and yeah, Smolensk at this range against Vermont. Oh, I am not so certain about that. that. You've sort of outstayed your welcome back there. Uh, you probably want to... Get torpedoes away? Maybe? I mean, what, what other reason do you have to sit that close? But yeah, Monty and Vermont are now pushing, and that Smolensk is going to be dead, which mean, which leaves only the carrier. The thing is, we are still ahead on points. The Smolensk is, is was it 60 for a cruiser? Or 50, 50, 50 or 60, for, something like that for a cruiser. Okay, Smolensk is dead, which leaves the carrier. So if that midway, he's already backing up. That, um, if that midway manages to take down Vermont, uh, then we win. Because they are getting the points income, but Vermont is on super low hit points. So if he can take down Vermont uh, before being killed himself, and he does, well done Midway. Uh, that's game, because we've held the capture circle for long enough that we've now got a 100 points lead, even though they are holding, as long as they don't kill the carrier in the last 20 seconds and with the Vermont gone, I don't think Monty can do that, because the Midway is just literally backing up. And uh, well played from the enemy team. What they haven't managed to do, though, was control the capture circle early on. <laughs> well, effective crossfire, but uh, what you were missing was cap control. And uh, that means uh, in the end we win on points, but this could have really gone either way. And yeah, 46,000 points of damage for um, for a tier 9, uh, tier nine uh, bottom tier. Battleship, not great. Could have, could have been better, could have, uh, could have been... Could have been more impactful, but at tier ten you're playing, you know, you're playing positional battles, and if it's center cup, this is just the kind of battle you're going to have to live with. But you can also get battles like this. You can get into a five v five on Friar's Lantern. We're fighting Kurfürst, Colombo, Minnesota, uh, Musashi, and a Minotaur. So no destroyers out there, which is very nice. And uh, we are spawning right next to A cup. So we're going to get ourselves going. And we do have two destroyers. I think one of them was a bot. Um, is, is that the bot? Yes, that's the bot Fletcher. Okay. So my plan here is uh, to not, because there's Vermont. <laughs> Vermont's probably going to be long range artillery support. My plan here is not to go for the capture circle, because that'd be suicide, but to uh, sail around the long way. Because I do actually have a relatively decent range on this ship to sail about the long way and get in behind, uh, get in behind the enemy team and uh, uh, get them into a crossfire between Vermont and myself. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that uh, we'll see how that ends up working. The, uh, that island there on the right with a lot of spikes on top, you can sort of use that to shield yourself from uh, from a lot of incoming enemy fire. So we're already we're not going to go for the cap. Because honestly, in a French battleship, that's sort of suicidal. But we're trying to get into an interesting position. 
and uh, we will see. Yes, we are spotted. That is probably, well, <laughs> could be any of them. But there's the Colombo uh, fuel smoke app, app so the, to, to help uh, with the return fire, just to not give them immediately something to shoot at while I'm executing my turn here. Uh, there's a Mino. Mino smokes up as well. That is a bot Fletcher. Your smoke's not going to help because it's bugged. So uh, yeah, if, if you're if you're ne if you're next to a bot destroyer, just don't bother. <laughs> a couple shots out at the Mino. Uh, mostly overpants could have been better. Uh, engine boost is off cooldown, so up we go again. The uh, CC smokes up as well, but um, there's also Grosser Kurfürst. So that's the one we can we can see. It's the one we shoot at. And uh, Colombo, fortunately for me, has the semi-armor piercing loaded. So while that hurts, it doesn't hurt nearly as much as it would have if you had the armor piercing in. And uh, now we're just making ourselves scarce. So Colombo can no longer shoot at me. Um, and there's the Minotaur. The Minotaur is now seeing, okay, we're free to go here. What he seems to be forgetting, though, is that he's got a French battleship on his flank. Not to his, to his credit, he doesn't know that I'm French because I don't look anything like it. But now the Kurfus and the Colombo can no longer shoot at me. Everybody shoots at Vermont, so Vermont goes, uh, goes defensive. Mino goes, aha, torpedo rush. <laughs> I shall go and uh, torpedo rush at Vermont, take out the carrier, and then go home with 100,000 points of damage. Yeah, about that. <laughs> And Vermont's like, oh, Mino coming in, bow in. We're going to be relatively careful here. Uh, Mino smokes up. Not going to help you because I know exactly where you are because you can't go anywhere. There's an island right next to you. So you're right about there. The, the AA opens up. So shots out. And that's a dead Mino. So, so much for that plan. Which means now uh, the Colombo and the Gosa Kurfürst uh, have run out of Mino. And there's the Kurfürst. So the Colombo might have buggered off. I don't know where he went. But we're going to brawl ourselves the Gosa Kurfürst. Um... I don't know what the French would shout during a, during a rush like that. A bucket or something. I mean, it's it's, it's Chinese. I don't know what they, what they shout, shout either. So, uh, Banzai is probably not the right word. But yeah, there you see, he sort of missed his, his first salvo. That's what I've used the fuel smoke for. Uh, that's the secondaries going off. Uh, we have set a fire. I think he has damage control. But he is now being cross-fired between myself and the Vermont. And... Um, I mean, it's of course a cool first, I'm not going to do a crazy amount of damage to it, but uh, I do have a decent amount of secondaries. And um, that's a double fire from his secondaries. Might take might take one more sal salvo from him. But I do have a relatively fast reload as well on these guns. That's a perma fire. There comes, this, I think these are secondary shots. Bow in to, to, uh, to belt tank the mains. That was that, and we're done. Okay, and that's a course cool first <laughs> sorted out. <laughs> and suddenly, well done Vermont. Uh, we don't hold any capture circles, but the enemy team's down to two ships. And suddenly that Christopher Colombo is asking himself, how did that go so wrong very, very quickly? <laughs> a, a, a second ago, I had a Gosa first and a Minotaur back here. Where did that all go? So uh, now we're going to take the cap, and now it's just a matter of, um, of farming some damage on the remaining ships. But uh, you see, this is this is the sort of the sort of play that I enjoy on French battleships. And uh, like I said, it doesn't always work because more often than not, you're in static battles where you don't have the necessary dynamics and possibilities to make this kind of uh, to do this kind of shenanigans. But when you do, it is absolutely exhilaratingly fun. So um, yeah, that that by the way is French dispersion. <laughs> we. <Whee! laughs> Fortunately, we have lots of guns that reload almost as quickly as a certain super cruiser thingy. Uh, okay, sorry Schlieffen, I think you wanted that one. Uh, you can have the Colombo, if uh, if he's still got some hit points left. Uh, so let's uh, let's see if we can get him in, in range, but yeah. Um, so, uh, the Wujing. Is it a good ship? What's well, an Alsace? You can have one for free, and you don't get forced to have a... to have a relatively garish camo on it. You can choose your camo. Uh, you know, um, you get you don't get the fuel smoke, but you get the rapid reload, which is good. Um, personally, I don't necessarily see a reason why you would want this ship, unless you always wanted a uh, slightly odd-looking uh, Chinese battleship that never even remotely existed in in actual history. Uh, and that's fine, right? If you want one of those things, then um, then sure, go for it. Um, if you don't have a French battleship and you always wanted one, but you don't have the time or the resources to grind up uh, 
to, to grind up to, you know, higher tiers, sure. It's a tier 9 battleship. You get into tier 10 battles, you will be shredded by Vermont and Yamatos, but occasionally you will have fun. And I think that on that note, I'll leave it here for today. That's it for, for me, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.